Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to basically track your drone footage, track lines in, and put all different types of animations in there. Now, this whole project is available to download for the Flatpak FX crew members. If you're not a member already, then you can check it out via the link in the description. And I've also included a few extra little animations and effects in that project file as well. So today I'm just gonna show you how to track your footage, add this sort of line in here. And for the Flatback FX crew members, you're gonna get this entire composition and you can also get all of these little pre-made animations that you can use in your own projects. So I got the question, how do you basically track, you know, lines and animations into drone footage? What, what is the best way? So there's lots of different methods for doing this. I'm using just this clip here, which is just basically a drone shot. The reason I picked this is because I like, or I want to basically use this part here of the road. But the other thing is there's basically things that are obstructing that, that path. So you've got trees, you've got things like this, you know, so I want to show you how you would actually go about, you know, tracking something into this. So the first thing we're going to do is basically just take that whatever your drone clip and create a new composition now it's really important that you create a composition using that footage otherwise 3d tracking and everything like that won't work unless you put it into a pre-comp so once i've got my composition what i'm going to do is just kind of shorten this down i'm just going to split this layer bring my composition in here start with something a little bit smaller. Now that I've got that, what I'm going to do is just simply start by adding the 3D tracker. So I'm just going to search for the 3D tracker. If yours is not already down here in the options, then you can just do that and, and it'll automatically start the camera tracker. Okay, so that's now finished. And if I select that, we can now see all of these little dots. I can scale up those, those uh, targets and also those little dots there. But basically when you put your, your mouse clicker on the screen, you can see that it tracks to certain points. Now the key to this is you can select different points, but you wanna select points down here that sort of follow a path. So I'm just holding shift to kind of select an area of various points. So this is important because once we kind of create one point down here, you want to do this for each area and that's because of the perspective change. It's going to create all sorts of problems if we don't do this. So what I'm going to do is now create a null and a camera. So we should have a null that sort of sits down there. So you can see it's pretty well tracked into the scene. I mean, I can mess around with that more, but We'll leave that as it is. Now, if you like these videos and you want to learn more about different animation techniques, then check out my animation master course. There'll be a link down in the description. In that, I'll walk you through the absolute basics of using After Effects to create all sorts of different cool looking animations and effects. I've had hundreds of students go through this course and grow their skills as a result. You can read and watch all of those testimonials via the link in the description below. If you've ever wanted to learn how to use After Effects or you're really interested in learning how to create different types of animations, then my Animation Master course is for you. So what I like to do is I'm gonna have no fill set on mine and I'm just gonna have like a stroke, you know, whatever color you want. With my pen tool selected, I'm just gonna click once and I'm gonna make this 3D. If I bring up that position property for that track, track null, by hitting P, I can copy that and paste it onto that layer that we just created. Now, if I find that little point that I first created and just drag it back here, I can now draw this line and then scale this up. Now that should be tracked into my scene. Now it's slightly drifting and that's because the tracker hasn't fully gotten little points exactly on there. They're probably taken points from, you know, the thing closer to the foreground. So you can adjust this by basically taking this layer and then moving it slightly out further. But you wanna be careful with moving this too much because you will affect your overall uh, position of your animation. Now, an easy fix for this is once you've kind of got it, if you haven't got a perfect track, you can either go back and redo your tracking points, create a new null track that's basically exactly on that point. Or what I like to do is just bring up the mask settings. So if I come down to the actual contents and then down to 
the path, I'm just gonna create a, a path keyframe here and I can just make any adjustments over time. So you're not adjusting basically like all the point, you're just essentially just making fine tune adjustments. All the tracking and everything is, is baked into the position of that layer. So you can see that does a pretty good job at, in highlighting that part of the road. Now you can go ahead and then change this. What I like to do is change this to be like color burn or something like, you know, something that just kind of really stands out. You can use like an overlay, something that's just gonna highlight but gonna bring that stuff through. Now the next issue that we've got is that, you know, we can see it sits over the top of this and we don't want that. So we want it to be hidden behind these trees and, and all those sort of things. Now a simple fix for this is just to take that background layer, duplicate it, which is the drone footage. You can delete that 3D camera because we don't need that. Now you could just create a mask which sort of sits. If it's quite a basic sort of thing, you could just create a mask like that. It's gonna, you'd have to then animate that mask. Another solution is what I like to do. If it's something a little bit more complicated, you can basically just come up here to the roto brush. And if you double click on your footage, you can just essentially cut an area like this. And if I'm holding option on my keyboard, I can just basically remove certain parts. So I only just wanna, you know, highlight these trees or this part here but I don't want this area around here. So I'm just highlighting the area that I want to remove. Now when I hit space bar, it automatically goes ahead and starts tracking through my footage, trying to isolate those parts. Now I'm using version 3.0 for the Roto brush, which does a pretty good job, but you can always go through and you may have to stop and then sort of add certain parts in again. So like the track started to disappear here so I might have to go through and just start painting again, kind of go ahead a little bit. So it's a bit of a process kind of going through the roto brush. It really depends on your footage. You know, some of these shots may just work really well and for some it may not work so well. I find with the using the latest version, version three, it does a much better job than it used to on version one or two. But again, you may just have to kind of go through and make those adjustments to whatever you need. Now, once you've kind of got that, then you can hit this freeze button. And that's really important. And most people skip that step. And the freeze will basically then bake that into that footage. So you can go back and edit it later, but it just means you don't have to keep re-rendering. And it's like basically pre-rendering that footage now. So you don't have to keep going and re-editing it. Okay, so that's finished and now I go back to my main composition and you can see it's done a reasonable job there of isolating it. There are parts where it's kind of sticking out. You can also just kind of grab the end of that layer, bring it in if it's, you know, so it's not sticking out quite as far. I mean, a lot of this, like there's little bits that are not quite perfect. So it would just be a matter of kind of going through that, that again, that process, you know, refining that roto brush. Uh, but that's the exact steps that you would use to do that if you wanted to use that method. I'll show you another method for doing this section up here. Now a mistake that a lot of people I see make is they'll then use that 3D camera that they've got in that null and they'll just go ahead now and create another line which sort of sits in here. The problem with that is that when you start using this null, the perspective is gonna be completely wrong and your layer is basically never gonna track perfectly to that. So what we do is we basically create another set of tracking points. So you're not creating a new camera, you're, tr you're creating basically a area here and creating a new null around that. So I like to create an, an area which sort of covers most of that perspective of that area that I want to use. I'm then going to create a new null based on that. And you can see that that null is now tracked into that area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the position for that. And I'm going to start this process again. I'm going to click over here. I make this layer then 3D. And with that position, what I'm going to do is then paste it onto that layer. Then I can bring this layer back and then just start by drawing out my layer. So I'm just kind of holding down my mouse wheel to sort of, holding down my mouse clicker to sort of drag this area out. Then I can start scaling this up. 
Now the issue that we've got here is the road is changing perspective. So it starts off, you know, quite thin here at the start. And then as it's getting closer to camera, it's getting larger. So one way to kind of deal with this is that what we want to do is change the thickness of the line. Now you can do that by coming down to the shape settings and then into the stroke. There's this thing called taper. You can basically just change the start length if you scale this down and then start scale up on the start width. And then with the overall size, you can scale this up until it kind of fills that end part and then just go ahead and readjust the beginning of that thing. So that's one way to kind of get that into that position. Then what we can do is I'm just going to change the blending mode of this to be also like an overlay effect. And what I'm going to do is then I can start to create a bit of an animation. I'm going to use the trims path effect and then I can just basically create like an endpoint and then bring this across and it's just going to animate on that line. Now you can see the issue here that that basically creates a very funny sort of animation. The perspective just seems to be a bit wrong with that line. So what I'm going to do is you can animate or change that width over time by animating these. So you can come back here and you can say, okay, so you could animate that over time to get rid of that by using the, by messing around with the start and the end length and animating those. The another way to do it is by just creating what I like to call like a Luma map. So what you do is you basically would create uh, this part here. You grab this drone footage again, bring it up to the top. And to this, what we're going to do is delete that drone footage. We just want to delete that tracker there. We're just going to add we're first going to add the hue and saturation. Now you can find all these by just searching for them up here and dragging them onto this layer. You're going to drag the saturation all the way down to zero. Then with the levels, what you're going to do is bring that black right up and you're also going to bring the white down. That's basically what you're aiming for is to make this road as dark as possible and make the areas around it as, as light as possible. So we're going to use that. Then you can exaggerate this by using the curves and just kind of really exaggerating that, you know, effect just to sort of try and bring up any other little bits that are sitting there. So once you've kind of got that, then what you can do is we can use this as a mat. So I'm just going to rename this one to mat. And then with that layer, I only want it to basically appear on the road part. So what I do is I come in here to my toggle switches and I'm going to set this to be the mat. I need to change this to be Luma and then invert. Now you can see what it does there. It basically just removes the part that's outside of the road. So you can see the part that it's removed, which is outside the road. And when I, when I invert this, you can see that it disappears. Now it's not perfect because this area here I can still see. So you, you can just kind of go through and then make the adjustment. So you can kind of drag this down if you don't need so much of it. Or you could even just kind of go through and manually refine that mask. But that's one way you can kind of... Another thing is the track is not 100%. So again, I could go back and readjust that. But a really simple fix and a way that I like to do it is just to grab that layer, bring up my pen tool here, come down to that mask path, create a path keyframe there. Here at the start, I'm gonna create another keyframe. And then it's just a matter of clicking away and sort of animating these lines to something like that. So you can just see that last little bit of adjustment is not a huge amount, but it just kind of then locks everything into position. So this is my finished composition here where I've just taken and repeated all of those different things here. I've masked out this a little bit better using that roto brush, created a luma mat, refined that a little bit there. And then I've just added in another whole line here. This composition is included for crew members. So you can see exactly how I did all of these little uh, extra bits here. The other thing that I added in here was just this little animated title. So I've included this in its own composition for those crew members. 
But basically, once you've kind of got that, all you need to do is just follow those same steps. You just kind of drag your flag animation in here. You would make it then 3D. And for the position, what you're going to do is you're going to find, you're going to find that null. You're going to copy that position and then you're going to paste it onto that flag layer. So then that will be stuck in your scene. So it'll be kind of stuck wherever you need it. That's all that I did. I just then repositioned it to get it exactly where it is. If I go back to that composition we were working on here, if I create some text, I can then essentially just kind of type out whatever you need, sort of scale this up, make this 3D, it's automatically going to reposition into a layer. Now, because it's floating up in the air, we'll need to reposition that by taking a point. Now you can get an exact point where you want the text to be. So again, just follow that target, create a new null for that position, and then you can basically position it. And once I've kind of got that, what I'm going to do is just kind of scale that up, move it across. And all I did then was I just changed the blending mode. So you can add like this to be multiply or overlay whatever you want to kind of get it to sit in there and there you go you've kind of got that text then you can add an animation to it whatever you want to do basically you can just use these techniques to recreate all of the different examples that i've seen the people the ones that people send me you know those examples pretty much all incorporate these exact principles. It's just a matter of tracking the lines in, animating them, and then basically removing parts. So like there's buildings in front of the road, just remove that. There's two techniques there using the roto brush, or you can use a luma mat to sort of isolate that part of the road. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up some tips and tricks. You can watch this video over here next on the side of the screen if you want to watch more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.